Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, and moving on to the next example, we have to determine the shortest distance from the point 4 and 2 to this line 2x plus 3y minus 1 equals 0. So another question dealing with the shortest distance from a line to a point, we've gone over examples before on this on the website, which by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you could go to the description box. In the description box, there's a link to the website where you can follow these videos in order. And when I'm doing this, I'm assuming that you watch the overview video that I went through for the general process of this. I described the general steps. And then I also describe or show a formula that you could use to do it a quicker way. So I'm gonna do both in this video as well, going through the steps the long way, which is what you're gonna be most likely expected to do. But then at the end, I'll also show you the formula and how we're getting the same solution. So if you haven't watched that overview video, make sure you do, because when I'm going through this, I'm assuming that you have watched that. So let's go here. So notice that we're given this line here. Notice that the line is actually in standard form, which is nice because when we use that formula, the line has to be in standard form. So we're not gonna have to rearrange this, but we are gonna have to rearrange this line for the longer steps because if you remember what's happening is just in general if we have a line we have a point to find the shortest distance it's going to be the perpendicular distance we're going to have to find the point of intersection between this line and this line and to do that we're going to have to get the equation of this line which means we're going to have to get the slope of it which means we're going to have to get the slope of this line over here that we're given in fact, I think this line, it's actually going to have a negative slope. So this is not an accurate representation of this scenario, but just kind of giving you the general overview of what we're going to be doing. So let's first take this line here and change it to y equals mx plus b form. So what we do then is we have to isolate for this y here. So let's bring the 2x over, bring the negative 1 over. So we'd have y equals, or 3y equals negative 2x plus 1. And we could divide everything by 3. And we'd end up with y equaling negative 2 over 3x plus 1 over 3. So now we could kind of see how this line looks a little bit more generally on the Cartesian plane. So notice that the y value or the y intercept is 1 over 3, the b value. So that's going to be over here. And then notice it has a negative slope. Okay, so it's going to look something like that over here. And then 4 and 2, uh, it's going to be like somewhere, let's say, yeah, I'll just put it here. Oh no, it's, uh, 2 is going to be above the 3. So let's put it. Uh, like up here. Again, this is not to scale. I'm just kind of showing you roughly what's happening. All right, so this line over here, it's this line or this line. Both of them are the same thing. And then four and two is up here. We got to find this distance over here. So Notice that this line here, it has a slope, this line, right, that we're working with, it has a slope of negative 2 over 3. So we need the slope of this line, and because that line is perpendicular to this line over here, the slope is going to be the negative reciprocal of that. So the slope of this second line here is going to be this flipped over, 3 over 2, and then the sign change. So notice this is negative. This is going to be positive. And so now what we can do, we have the slope of this line. It's 3 over 2. And we have a point on that line. So we have a slope. We have a point. We can find the equation of the line now. So we'll have y equals or uh, sorry, y equals 3 over 2x plus b. To solve for this b value, we could plug in 4 for x. We could plug in 2 for y. At this point, you may also be using that 
other formula where we have y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. To find the b value, just make sure you're getting the exact same equation at the end that I'm going to get over here. So we'll have 2, uh, 3 over 2 times 4, 2 goes into 4 twice, so this would end up equaling 6. Uh, right? Yeah. 6, and then we got plus b. So b would equal negative 4 when we bring the 6 over. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So this line here, we got the equation of it. We got 3 over 2x uh, minus 4, like that. So now, what's the next step? Well, we got the equation of this line. We got the equation of this line. And now we have to find the point of intersection between them, right? We got to find this point over here. So we got y equals 3 over 2 uh, x minus 4, like that. And so from here, I feel like the y is already isolated, right? So let's just take this, plug it in here. Or actually, you know what? Let's actually, I was going to say we change this to y equals mx plus b format. We could just make both of those lines equal. Yeah, let's just do that. So we'll have 3 over 2x minus 4 equals, remember the this line here, this standard form line, I erased it, but it was negative 2 over 3x plus 1 over 3. So we could let this equal that. We could plug in this for that y value. So this would be negative 2 over 3x plus 1 over 3. Whichever way you do it, you could take this, you could plug it in for this y, so you'd have 3 bracket, all of that, and then you could solve for x. Many different ways you could solve for x and y with these two equations. Just whichever way you do it, make sure you're getting the same point of intersection that I'm going to get. So bring all of the x values to one side, and then I'm going to bring the negative 4 over. So we'll have Let's do this on the side, 3 over 2 plus 2 over 3. The lowest common denominator between 2 and 3 is 6. Multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3, multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2. So we'd have 9 over 6 plus uh, 4 over 6, which would give us 13 over 6. So we'd have 13 over 6x equals 1 over 3 plus 4 over 1. Lowest, com uh, lowest common denominator between 3 and 1 is 3. So multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3. We'd end up with 1 over 3 plus 12 over 3, which would give us 13 over 3 like that. So this would be 13 over 3. So from here, what we would do is to isolate for this x, we would divide both sides by 13 over 6. So these cancel. x would equal 13 over 3 divided by 13 over 6, right? This fraction divided by that fraction, which would give us 13 over 3 multiplied by 6 over 13. We would flip this fraction. Notice the 13s cancel out. And then we'd have 6 over 3, which would just give us 2. So the x value of this point is 2, like that. And now we just have to solve for the y value. So we could plug it into, we could plug in that x value of 2 either here or here. I'm going to plug it in here because notice that if we plug in 2 here, these 2s would cancel out, right? So we wouldn't have to work with fractions then. But again, if you want to plug it in here, you'll still get that same y value. So this would be the 2s cancel out. And notice we'd have 3 minus 4 left, which would give us negative 1. So the y value would be negative 1. And then notice that at this point, this ends up being negative 1. But what's happening here? Well. This point here that I drew, 
it's actually incorrect, right? Because this point here, if this is the Cartesian plane, this point would have um, a positive y value, but it has a negative y value. Okay, so I made a rough drawing there, but this is an example of where even if you make a rough drawing, sometimes you're gonna get results where you have to adjust the drawing. And so the way this actually looks like, if we go into more detail, now that we have more detail, what's happening is that this point four and two, it's like way out here. Okay, so if we find the perpendicular distance, it's actually gonna be like, let's, anyway. It looks something like that. So this point, it, this point of intersection is actually gonna be in this quadrant, right? So this could, should be sort of shifted downward. Okay, and I didn't know that until we did a little bit of more work. For these kinds of questions, unless your teacher really wants you to graph it, you don't even have to graph it on a Cartesian plane. You could just draw a line and then draw a point just to have like a visual rough reference of what we're doing. And then when we got this point to a negative one, we don't necessarily have to go and go into details and waste time on that. But your teacher may expect you to, um, to know how to graph it or to graph it. And if so, then you gotta take more time, go into more detail, a lot more time than I did, right? Because notice that I didn't take the time to go into detail here. And so this drawing was incorrect. The drawing should be something like this approximately. Basically that point of intersection is going to be in this quadrant versus that one, okay? But same process is still applying. We're still finding the point of intersection between two and or the uh, distance rather between two and negative one, and then that point four and two, right? And if we had the general drawing here, two negative one, four and two. So to do that, uh, we got to use the length formula. So Let's write two, negative one here. So I'll let this be x1, y1, x2, y2. So we know the length or the distance between two points is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so here we got x2, which is two, minus x1, which is four squared plus y2, negative one, minus y1, squared like that. So this would end up equaling negative two to the power two plus negative three to the power two, which would give us four plus nine, which would give us root 13. So that ends up being the final answer. That's the shortest distance between this point and this line, right? Square root of 13. So now what we could do is use that formula, see if it matches up. So if you remember, the shortest distance between a line in standard form and a point M and N, the distance between those is going to equal the absolute value of AM plus BM plus C all over the square root of A squared plus B squared. And so notice, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's nice that this line, it's already in standard form. So notice the A value is two, the B value is three, the C value is negative one, the M value is four, the N value is two. So what happens when we plug everything in? Well, we'd have the square root of the A value, which is two times the M value four plus the B value three times the N value of two minus one for the C value, all over the square root of the A value is two, and then the B value is three, like that. So what happens here is we'd end up equaling uh, eight plus six, which is 14, 
minus 1 is 13. So we'd have the absolute value of 13 over the square root of 4 plus 9. And we'd end up with the absolute value of 13 is just a positive, so it stays as a positive. And then this would end up equaling the square root of 13. So wait, what's happening? We have 13 over root 13, and then we have root 13 here. And you may think they're different, they're actually the same thing. If you take this, plug it into your calculator, take this, you'll get the exact same decimal. The question is, how can we take this and convert it to that? Well, we can rationalize the denominator. I went through that in the example before. What we can do is we can multiply this by root 13 over root 13, which equals 3 root 13. And then root 13 times root 13 is 13, like that. And then notice the 13s would cancel out, and we're just left with root 13. Again, you may not be expected to know all this, okay? So when I'm doing all this, and if your teacher hasn't covered it, don't be intimidated. You may not even um, need to use this formula that I'm showing you. I'm just showing you in case you want something to quickly check your answer and to not get confused when you get to something like this a lot of times it's the exact same thing as the answer that you get when you do it the long way right a lot of these can be in different formats they could even be in decimals and not in exact values the most important thing that I want to go over in these kinds of videos is the steps of how to find the shortest distance from a point to a line